National Milling Company of Guyana was established in 1969, which uh, makes it just over 40 years uh, of age and existence in Guyana. Um, throughout the years, the National Milling Company changed its variety of products. We, we started off with one common flour for one basic bread product. Over the years, demand increased, as well as the variety of, of products, the demand for the variety. We added on self-rising flour, a roti mix, different types of bread flours, braided flours, like butters for, for fried chicken, for, for pizzas, a great variety. And the package size changed from, from just being 100-pound uh, bags to going into one kilo, two kilo, 0.5 kilo, different sizes. And nowadays, nowadays we started even with the 300 gram and 600 gram packages for convenience food. Also, we did uh, introduce a few years ago a health line of products which go into the whole wheat, the high fiber content flour, um, the wheat up, we added uh, baby food, with the cream wheat up and just recently we added on uh, some food that is uh, used or some flour that is used for a religious fun called passat mix halwa sieni mix our staff in total is about 110 to 120 persons at all times and we contracting out some extra work at times as well. In addition to that, we're just about to open a branch in uh, Letem. We're building a, we build a warehouse and uh, we will s uh, start stocking the warehouse in the next two or three weeks. The trade to Brazil is already established. Um, we had some hindrance with the, with the road being in poor condition, but that is overcome now as well and hopefully stays like that for good while. The markets, as I just mentioned, we are exporting, or mainly we're producing for the Guyana market, but we're also exporting to Brazil, to Barbados, to Suriname, and some other islands. Um, coming from a monopoly position a few years back, we had to develop markets, and we still are in pursuit of new markets. So. It's an ongoing procedure and part of being able to export and to, to evaluate weaknesses, we decided to go for ISO, which was one tool for us to, to come from a, um, from a single market position into an export uh, position. Uh, it helped us a great deal to, to find ways and means to find weaknesses, better them, and uh, be competitive in the international market. The output of uh, National Milling Company in, in uh, quantity is that assuming a population of 750,000 um, people in Guyana, each and every person uses about 50 kilogram of wheat flour per year. That is about the quantity we're producing a year, plus then the export market, which is a growing market. The company is certified uh, ISO 9001 2008 standard, and the company has been certified for the past three years. The scope the company is certified under is manufacturing, packaging, distribution, and sales, um, flour, flour product, and Specialty flower. So first of all, the, the need to find out the need to do something in regard of quality management was when we, when the flower market in uh, Guyana opened, and we realized that we had certain weaknesses to to first present ourselves to be of con constant and uh, good quality. We knew we had those weaknesses, and that was our approach to, to uh, pinpoint and name our weaknesses and uh, 
sort them out, solve those problems. So what we did is uh, extensive research. What can ISO do for us? And we, we learned that uh, ISO will name everything that goes wrong. We establish what we want to have right. And ISO will tell us without if or but, it tells us this is right, this is wrong. And we have to act. We are forced to act on our wrongs. And it's a continuous process, whereas once we have one problem, we solve it, um, and there should be a next one, also that one. We have to solve it, and we have to find out what caused it, who caused it, what can, must we do that it wouldn't occur again. And by doing that, over the, the time, we, we come to a level where we will be in a much better position than we were ever before. And we feel that. It took a while for us to get there. It was a hard way. It still is a hard way. But I think it's well worth it. And every year onwards, it's just more beneficial. The main challenge was a change in culture. A main challenge. So we had our ways of work. Every employee knew what he had to do, but did it over the years just the way, without considering left, right, center. So by establishing rules, guidelines, procedures um, that we have to follow, people had to change their culture, their habits of working. And that was a great, great uh, challenge. So we um, had to educate people, train people, uh, give awareness, awareness, awareness all the time, and retrain and audit. And it was a hard, hard way, but we're getting there. So right now we're in a position where we said, Yes, we're not perfect, but we're good. So we aim for, for perfection then. Some of the changes that I observe here at Namelco with the staff, it actually improves their morale. They actually value what they're doing. They actually try to ensure that they have more consistent product because they have procedures and guidelines given to them. The corrective and preventive action process is actually a very important tool here at Namelco because before, when we had an issue, we never really get down to the root of the problem. Now we're forced with IS to, to actually get to the root of the problem, figure out what's the problem, and solve it so we have a more efficient and effective process. Also, with training of the employees and education, upliftment, and so those are things employees benefit from. We also have a more effective customer feedback process. We, have, we handle customer um, complaint in a more efficient manner. We try to get their perception. We try to improve their product. We try to focus customer satisfaction here. So those are some things we really benefit from, and, and those are some changes that we welcome here. Everything, basically, we work with procedure and documents to ensure that we are actually meeting customer satisfaction. That is our focus here. So whatever we do, whether we have to do training, whether we have to improve a process, you know, we try to aim to customer satisfaction here. Yes, actually, with certification for 9001, which is really a quality management system. You know, you'll be able to work. So if you have to do trading in the open market, get new market, especially if you have to be um, a ISO certified company just to get into those markets, that is also a benefit of Namelco actually hitting new markets there. So it is really good in terms of profitability. Also, yes, you talk about reducing waste. With consistent product, you have less um, wastage, you try to manage your resources better, those things are important here. So workers are aiming to ensuring that we have less wastage, increased profit, you know, those things are important. Okay, challenges are always there because as you know, we have to ensure we do audits regularly to ensure the workers are doing what we're supposed to be doing, following procedure, guidelines ensuring they're actually producing quality products. So the challenges are always there. Especially if you get new employees, you have to go through the whole process of training, upgrading, ensure they understand what we're supposed to be doing, 
and so so those are the challenges we're facing every day ensure the workers are on their toes doing what they're supposed to be doing we started off with uh, a great deal of problems as i said we had to change our culture it doesn't happen overnight we're still in the process of changing our culture we're still in the process of uh, getting better we have situations where products are not identified properly we, we but you know it's a it's a operation it's uh, business every day so there is human errors but uh, i think tejwati and samantha are doing a great great job to to when they go around and to to highlight those problems to bring them to attention of, of workers and whereas in the beginning people felt offended i did something wrong they now accept it and that's a major part the acceptance that things are not correct and there is a, a, a way of handling a process better. That is a great benefit already. From, from National Milling's point of view, I can only recommend it to every operation applicable to have a quality management system as it really benefits your operation. At the end of the day, it is um, net profit in your pocket as you have less wages you're more efficient you you and at the end of the day the consumer benefits with better products as we save money customer will save money we have we are in a position to access markets that we were not able to access prior to being certified as some requirements of other companies are that are certified they require for the person who delivers their raw material to be certified as well so that there's a flawless line of uh, quality control. The Milko will encourage other companies to go certify under these standards because these international standards outline basic elements to a good quality management system and these elements are like good business practices and being ISO certified you get to find out like it's basically a lot of documentation and through documentation you get to inquire what's the problem if you have any com problem in your company and most obviously all companies do have problems in, in internal um, and also the corrective action can be taken to solve these problems so it is a great benefit being ISO certified so yes As you know, Namelco is pro producing a variety of products. We have from grains to whole wheat to white flour to bran to wheat germ to even specialty products such as parsad, polari mix and so forth. And each of these products serve their own purposes. You can use it for their own like roti mix. You can use it to make paratha roti, self-fried and cakes. Uh, polari mix is for polari and everything, any variety you look for, we have it. Also, the quality of our product, we ensure that we meet in the requirement of GNBS. They want us to ensure that we have our vitamins in, your um, iron, your thymine, riboflavin. We ensure that those things are in. So we're actually ensuring that the consumer out there get a quality product, a healthy product, and that is important for us to ensure our consumer getting that. National Milling Company gets a uh, wheat shipment of 8,000 tons every six to eight weeks. And uh, the wheat is discharged on the river, gets conveyed into uh, our wheat storage silos. We have a storage capacity of about 14,000 tons, so we have uh, plenty of wheat for, for three months and more. From there, it is as needed transferred to the mill. In the mill, all foreign objects like dust, stone, Whatever impurities are in there are taken out. The wheat gets then tempered, conditioned and tempered, and is then transferred to the mill after being rested for 12 to 24 hours. And the mill is then getting processed. Okay, these are two wheat samples that we have taken from the silo. As you can see, this is a hard wheat sample. This is a type of wheat that we have in the silo. And we also have a soft wheat our low protein wheat. This is another type of wheat that we purchase here. So we have two types of wheat in those silos.